Hey guys, welcome to Inside SSL, the show where we cover everything to do with SSL and even some news outside, talking about basketball outside SSL as well. I am Andre, with me is Ming here. And we're going to go through all that we've had in our first weekend of Stats Sports League Season 12. First game on tap was Young Gunners versus the KL Twin Towers. Eggy had a monstrous game, 51 points. Tell me, how did it go down, man? I mean, Young Gunners really lived up to their name. They just went out chucking three-pointers. Anyone on their roster uh, wasn't afraid to chuck up a shot, living uh, true to their Kobe, uh, to the Kobe name. Uh, they shot 32, they, they chucked up 32 three-point attempts, but only unfortunately scored seven of them. So a little bit inefficient from three-point range. KL Twin Towers though relied heavily on the previously mentioned superstar that they just picked up this offseason, Egirdas Keblikas, previously of Stuffy X. Uh, he scored 51 points, had 13 rebounds on 70% field goal shooting. And they, as a team, Kel Twin Towers played really well for their first game, managed to force 35 points of turnovers, and I think that was the key for them winning this game. Yeah, they won 97 to 64. That's a huge margin. It's a good start for KL Twin Towers. You know, young, young Gunners, better luck next time. I know they're going to come into the next week ready to go. Our next game on tap was Bandwagon versus the ISL Panthers, a hotly contested matchup which Bandwagon held on for the victory, 55 to 48. Man, what do you think about Justin Hahn? Justin Hahn just continued his breakout. He, he had a semi-breakout last season, but this year he's full-blown. ISKL goes into this season without their seniors and Justin Hahn is now one of the leaders on the team. On the bandwagon side of things, uh, Faz, which is the new pickup, uh, led the team in scoring with 12 points, but really even contribution throughout the whole team. No really standout scorers, and I think even contribution is what you can expect from Bandwagon throughout the season. Our game of the week was next, Ligers versus Advanced Pro. They barely held on Advanced Pro, did 78 to 80, down to the wire, man. What happened? I mean, Ligers definitely gave Advanced Pro a scare right here in their first game of SSL 12. Apostle Paul came back with the Ligers and immediately made an impact, scoring 30 points throughout the whole game. But on Advanced Pro side, their championship experience has helped them. John Ng, 24 points and just uh, contesting three point after three point attempts that Apostle Paul put up. Kotson Ping as well. No one could stop Kotson Ping in the post. His deadly post spins and drop steps were unable to be contested by any Ligers players. But it came down to the last second where Ahmed, I don't know what he was doing. Ahmed himself even said in the post-game press conference that he, J.R. Smith, that one, fouled Advance Pro's Ho Yao Long on the fast break and gave them the two free throws to go ahead and that was the end of it. Alice Ballers for the KL Rhinos was up next. It was a tough matchup early on. I think the Ballers gave the Rhinos a little bit of a scare, man, didn't they? Slightly, slightly, especially in the first half. KL Rhinos started things slow, but Atlas Ballers were just running and gunning out of the gates. Sean Lowe with 21 points. New pickups Jackson Legoway and Yannick Blackburn contributing 15 and 13 points respectively as well. But Benjamin Olajide of the KL Rhinos, previously of Mercenaries, put in an MVP performance, 35 points, 19 rebounds, what you expect. And of course, uh, Bench of the KL Rhinos just helped and just contributed to the win. Small, small things here and there added up and that's just, that's just how, thing went, how things went. Yeah, full credit to Mercenaries, Ben. Full credit. <laughs> So Mercenaries and Knights played the last game of the opening weekend of SSL 12 and the Mercenaries unfortunately fell to the Knights 66 to 92. What happened there, Coach Dre? Well, the, the Mercenaries put up a great fight, a lot of hustle on defense. I think they really made the Knights, uh, the team that I coached, uh, put in a little bit extra effort. Knights came out of the gates running. That was great to see everyone passing the ball. 
Fifi had 20 points on track for 60, I think, in the first quarter. And I said, okay, you know, sit down. We'll, we'll, we'll get at other guys. And so it was great to see everyone score. I think everyone scored at least uh, a basket in the game. So it was awesome work from the Knights all together. Wait, hold up. The sniper is still around, man. What, what you have five, eight, <laughs> ten times? Is it? Well, watch out. Whoopsie Wednesday. Watch out. It's coming. <laughs> Hey, Rabi, shit. Hey, Rabi, shit. Shafu, cabinet, I hear that it's trending now, but uh, now, man, now, man, now, man, uh, tell me what you think about SSL. Ooh, the SSL that happened last weekend? Yes. Nice, all right. But I, I, I'm actually specifically going to touch about my team, okay. which is the KL Rhinos. Uh, we started a little bit slow in the first half, uh, mainly because, you know, uh, new faces, a new lineup, so we haven't really get our chemistry to blend in so far, but uh, we kind of woken up in the second half. Mm -hmm. uh, and also credits to the Atlas Ballers, which is a really tough team. Mm -hmm. uh, they gave us uh, a good run for our money. Mm -hmm. uh, so we, we, we didn't expect like uh, Atlas to, to go and run up against us and stuff like that, right? But so they gave us a good surprise. Uh, we were definitely uh, a little bit of uh, underestimating them due to we have the bigger size and stuff like that. So uh, nevertheless, it was a good win because uh, it's only our first game together. It's only going to get better from then onwards. Man. No window. Okay, and the second team that I want to uh, highlight on this season is the Knights. Newly reformed team, uh, new faces, a lot of uh, role switching. I see Gandhi doing the point guard position now. Uh, giving up on his Turi Ayam set play uh, and also serving as a backup uh, point guard for the main point guard, Hussein Haman. So, big shout out to you, Putra. Uh, congratulations on your first five role and also your first few points for season 12. So, I'm really happy for you guys. Uh, also, you guys uh, won the, against the mercenaries. It was a tough team for you guys as well. It's the same that goes to us. Uh, you guys have new faces, we have new lineups as well. Uh, it's tough. We didn't expect that uh, the opponents were going to run at us also, but we managed to get the win. So, you win, I win. Everybody wins. Free chilies. Hey guys, this is Andre and this is Outside SSL. Today, what we're going to talk about is going to be the FIBA Asia qualifiers. We had uh, a lot of news on Facebook. You can hear a lot of people complaining about what the score because the score line is honestly a little bit disappointing. 152 to 48, and Team Malaysia falling to Team Chinese Taipei. But I want to really talk about the reasons behind it and we give you a little bit of an alternate perspective. Now, you can look down that list. Immediately, any follower of uh, Malaysian basketball can look down that player list and see that players that were playing in that game weren't the usual national team players. And that's something indicative indicative of, of what the coach has said as well, where he says that the uh, team itself didn't have a lot of time to practice. It was a team that was kind of put together in a rush, and it showed on the court. They did a good job in the first quarter trying to help hold on and, and kind of fight with Chinese Taipei, but Chinese Taipei shot the lights out. They shot almost 50% from three-point territory. And I'm not going to go down this route of breaking down the stats too much, but what I really want to talk about is having to kind of understand how difficult it is for a team that's brand new, thrown together, because of, you've got to understand the, uh, the coronavirus, the, the health concerns that maybe some players may have had. So they, they came together, they said, you know what, no matter what, we've got to put a team out there, uh, whether, whether by hook or by crook. And you know, Malaysia has to fulfill that obligation. So sometimes uh, we've got to look beyond the scoreline, understand that these players, no matter who they were, came out and stood up and represented Malaysia on the world stage, no matter the fact that they knew that it was going to be a tough battle, right? They didn't back down. And they were still, you know, legitimate health scares. The stadium themselves was, itself was actually closed to, uh, to spectators because of the virus itself. So there was already precautions in place. Uh, so, you know, understand that there was health concerns and they still you know, stepped up. Understand that they, were, they knew they were going to be facing a tough team and they still stepped up. So uh, honor that team for that. Uh, I mean, you know, give them props, right? It was a tough loss. I know 100 points is not an easy margin of loss to swallow. But you know, give those guys props. It was awesome that they, they did step up, and yeah, you know, hopefully we can do better next time. Welcome to your game previews for next weekend. Uh, we're gonna start with Ava versus KL Rhinos. 
Will the real KL Rhinos please stand up? Is Benjamin Olajide going to put in another MVP performance or will AVA manage to stop the tri-headed monsters? Bandwagon versus Mercenaries. Mercenaries to jump on the bandwagon. Mercenaries going to need a big game from Zong again this week if they're going to beat the, the bandwagon. Atlas Ballers versus KL Twin Towers. It's going to be a foot race, like foot race at the SSL 12 track meet, man. Mo both these teams are going to run and gun throughout the whole game. It will depend on their key players, Aguirdas and Jackson Legoway. ISKL Panthers versus Advanced Pro. You're going to learn today, young ones. You're going to learn today. ISKL Panthers with good experience going up against the championship pedigree, the back-to-back-to-back championship pedigree of Advanced Pro. Ligers versus Knights. Knights versus Ligers. This is your game of the week. If you are not tuning into the live streams this, you have to tune into the live streams. Knight just beat Mercenaries this week. Ligers narrowly lost to Advance Pro. Exciting game. Go Strong versus Young Gunners. Warning, this is not a replay. You can learn today, young ones. <laughs> young Gunners is gonna chuck shot, chuck shot up, but we have not seen Go Strong yet this season. We'll see how they do.